The final chapter of the Cities of Sigmar Great to Glory is here. And being just shy of 140 points of a 1500 point army, I had not one but two hero models to finish it off. Let's get started. Being 140 points short of finishing the army left me thinking of what else can I add and after looking through the battle tome I really wanted a battle mage and I liked the idea of adding in an assassin from the elves section. So I broke out my cursed city box and had two perfect models for it, Octor and Glimscry and Quiladus the Exile. Starting off with the battle mage I wanted this guy to really stick out so I went with a bright colour for his robes. I based them with two thin layers of Thousand Suns blue. For the little bit of skin he's shown, I went to a pale tone with Rackard flesh. For the wooden colour of his staff, I based it with Baneblade brown. He has three magic books on him, so I gave them all their own colours with Mephiston red, Hobgrat hide and Barakinard burgundy. I think this might be the first time I've actually used the purple paint, or at least for a very long time. Retributor armor was then picked out for his mask because I like the idea of having a mage with a golden mask. The beard of course had to be grey so I based it with Mechanicus standard grey. The leather on the books was then painted with doom bull brown. The top part of the staff was painted darker than the rest of it so I went with dryad bark for this. Then the rope on the staff was based with screaming skull. To finish off the base coats, the magic ball on the staff was based with Corax white. With all the base coats down, the shading was next, and I will be diluting the shades with lamin medium. To kick it off, I shaded the rose with Coella green shade. I'm not 100% what this is going to turn out like, but I decided to try it and let's see how it turns out. For the skin, I had Reichlin flesh shade on his hands. With the Reichland flesh shade still on the wet palette, I also use it on the purple and yellow books. The obvious choice for the wooden staff is of course going to be Agrax Earth Shade. The red book was then shaded with Caraburg Crimson. The golden mask and the few small golden parts across the model were then shaded with Gulliman Flesh. I then shaded the beard and all the leather parts with Nolan Oil. And for the finishing touch for the shades is skeleton hoard on the darker parts of the staff and the ropes around it. On to the final push now and this is where I really want the robes to pop. I started out with a kind of chunky highlight of a thousand suns blue along the robes edges. Then I started edge highlighting the edges with temple guard blue to make the ends really stick out. For the hands I lightly add some rack art flesh along the fingers and the knuckles. There's not many edges along the staff that are easy to pick out, so the best way to highlight it was to dry brush flayed one flesh across it. For the books, I highlighted them with Evil Sun Scarlet, Ushapti Bone and Pink Horror. I used Liberator Gold to brighten just the front part of the mask and a few gold bits that are around the model. The long beard was then dry brushed with Dawnstone to brighten it back up. Scrag brown was then used on the leather parts and the darker wood at the top of the staff. For the final finishing touch, the magic ball was shaded with two thin layers of Briar Queen Chill. With the battle mage finished, it's time to start on the assassin. And this looks like an intimidating model to paint. It's a really nice looking model, but it has a lot going on. But if I break it down step by step, I should be okay. The first thing I want to do is sort out the main colour of her clothes. I want her to look dark, so the first base colour I'm going with is Caliban Green. For the leather on her arms and boots, I go with Doom Bull Brown. She has a good bit of fur on her shoulders, her legs and a few other places, and I didn't want it to be too dark, so I went with Dawnstone for the base colour. But the feathers on her waist I'm going really dark, with Incubi Darkness. I picked Rack Art Flesh for her skin because I wanted a pale looking skin tone on her. For the gold parts I picked out Retributor Armour and made sure not to forget the small piece on her forehead. I wanted the bow and arrows to have a natural wood colour so I went with Baneblade Brown for its colour. 
I almost forgot that the arrow had a metal tip on it, so I quickly based it with lead belcher. To finish the arrows, I based the flights with corn raid. When it came to the hair, I wanted blonde hair, and I always struggled to get hair that looks like blonde hair. So after looking around for a bit, I saw that Ushapti Bone is a really good base cut for it. The final base colour is Zandri Dust, and that's for her antlers. To start the shading off, I decided to dry brush Warpstone Glow on the green clothes because my hands are no way steady enough to pick out the tiny lines of detail. I had to trim one of my dry brushes to make it small enough to get right in there. Then I heavily diluted some Nullin Oil with Lamb and Medium and shaded it over her clothes. Then I add some less diluted Nullin Oil over the leather parts. And all shades and contrast paints used in this part will be diluted with Lamb and Medium or Contrast Lamb and Medium. For the fur, I went with Basilicanum Grey, and for the dark feathers, I shaded them with Nullin Oil. The skin and the gold was then shaded with Reikland Flesh Shade. For the final shades, I added Skeleton Horde on the bow and arrows, her hair, and the antlers. To start the highlights off, I go back to dry brush and warp zone again, but this time I do it much lighter, I just want to barely touch the edges. I go to Scrag Brown for the finishing touches on the leather, and I very carefully just get the smallest bit of paint just to highlight the edges. For the feathers, I went with Thunderhawk Blue, and this is the first time I've been using this paint. I really wanted to go a bit brighter, but the idea was to keep her toned down, just like how an assassin would look. For the skin, I made a little bit of a mess here. I'm still not the best at layering bright skin tones, and the flayed one flesh layer I added was not turning out great. So later on, I come back and I add a little bit of Reikland flesh shade to fix it back up. All the gold parts were then highlighted with Liberator Gold, and the bow and arrows with flayed one flesh. The arrow tip was finished up with a highlight of Stormhost Silver, and the flights with Evil Sun Scarlet. I broke out the trusty dry brush for the final time and dry brushed pallid witch flesh on her hair and dry brushed tyrant skull to finish her antlers. And that's it! The final two models are added into the army bringing it to a total of 1550 points. I did have a camera mishap near the end but I added some hex ray flame around the assassin's eyes and it turned out really nice. This is the first time I sat down and painted a whole army from start to finish and I really enjoyed doing it. It's great to say that I finally have a fully finished City of Sigmar army. The only thing I think that's missing is a big monster type of unit and that's something I might come back to in the future but for now it's time to move on to the next project. I hope you guys got something from these videos. My goal has always been to make painting less intimidating and try to make it as easy as possible for people to do it and I hope I achieve that in this series. But let me know in the comment section what you guys think and let me know if you've gained anything from this. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't and once again, thanks for watching.